Hi everyone, my name is Bianca and welcome to Vintage on Tap. This video though is going to be for anyone who has ever looked at a sewing pattern and just been like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> so I wanted to make this video specifically to talk to people who have been confused by sewing patterns before. You know, I, I'm thinking back to one of the very first patterns that I ever made, learned how to make, which you may have heard about in a previous video, which was a uh, 1920s, 30s flapper dress that just was, it was garbage. I, I, it was awful. But I just remember specifically from that experience, looking at my sewing pattern that I was working with and literally feeling like just confused, lost, did not know what I was looking at at all, couldn't even process it. And knowing that that experience is still a very real thing for a lot of people today. You know, browsing Instagram, browsing Facebook, all the places and seeing that a lot of these questions kept coming up. Like, how do you read a pattern envelope? How do you read the instructions well and really understand what's happening there? How do you read the tissue paper itself? So this video is going to only focus on the envelope. We will be doing uh, videos in the future for the instructions and for the tissue paper uh, in a pattern. But for this one, we're just gonna be talking about the envelope because so many um, sewing problems can be solved by just the envelope alone. So we're gonna be breaking that down. Um, if you have been sewing for a while, definitely still watch this video. You might get something out of this one. Um, and then even if there's things that I have not been paying attention to as I go through my sewing patterns, um, let me know down in the comments if, you know, if there's something that sticks out for you or something that I should also look out for. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I've been sewing for a very long time, but the way that I process the way that these pattern envelopes are designed is it's a lot more quick, uh, quick and dirty. I just want to be able to pull things out so that I can start sewing right away. So I want to kind of pass that on to you so you don't have to go through that big old learning curve and your sewing can also go, you know, a lot more quickly and you can understand what's on those envelopes a lot easier. Now, um, I've broken down this video uh, just to kind of make sure that there's timestamps in there. So you may see those pop up here in a second but I broke it down in in like the bigger chunks so we can kind of deep dive on those sections um, so if you already uh, know some things about sewing patterns definitely feel free to jump anywhere in the video that makes sense for you to continue to to gain your no your sewing knowledge uh, but let's go ahead and get started as you're getting started the first thing you're going to want to pay attention to is the design as well as the sizing of that specific design so the pattern that we're going to be using as our example over the course of this video is going to be Butterick uh, 5556. Uh, the specific pattern does not matter for this example, but this will just be what I'm using. Anyway, so we're just going to walk over the front of the envelope and then the back of it as we go through this video. But the first thing you'll want to pay attention to is, as I said, the design and the size. So as you can see, 1950s uh you know the, the size of the skirt how big it is how full you can see how it's illustrated on the on the uh on the model there now yes it's a pretty picture but this will kind of give you a lot of clues as to what is going to be needed in terms of this design what it's intended to generally look like like obviously this is not size inclusive to everybody it's going to be a lot of things like that but this just gives you a general overview of the fit of this particular garment now as we go into the size itself, you can see here that this particular pattern that I have is between size 16 and 22. This is obviously not all available sizes for this pattern, but we're going to get into that by flipping it over. Now, when it comes to this particular pattern, uh, on the Butterick line, usually on the little back flap, you can see um, all the sizes and, and what their general measurements are going to be. Now, as I said, this particular pattern is a, what did I say, 16 to 22. Uh, this one is 16 to 22. But you can see here that there, it's actually, this particular design is available between size 8 and 22. So there's two, two pattern groupings in this particular pattern. There's the 8 to 14, and then there's also the 16 to 22. So you can buy the, small, the smaller size range and then the larger size range. So they both exist for this design. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to as you're picking your pattern out is what are your, your personal actual measurements? Not the number on the top, not the number on the back of your clothing tag, but what are your actual physical uh, measurements that you're, you're rocking, right? So um, in my case, 
I'm actually closer in the, well, there's a reason I have the larger size, but um, I'm in the 16 to 22 range. So my, uh, my bust is closer to the 16 on the high bust. Watch my full bust adjustment video if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so I'm 16, uh, size 16 in the bust, in the waist I'm size 22, and in the hips I'm size 18. So I'm definitely comfortably within that range. Now, if you're on the smaller ranges, you know, you might need that smaller uh, size pattern grouping. Now, to, what to keep in mind about this is that, you know, this is just the this particular patterns block. Many different pattern companies use many different sizing. So this size range might be something completely different for a different pattern company. So keep that in mind. You always want to look at that individual brand and see what they say is a size eight for them or a size 10 for them. Like that's gonna differ from brand to brand. Anyway, so as we're looking at this, you know, as you're browsing the store, as you're looking online, whatever, and you're trying to decide which pattern should I get, you know, get something that's the closest to you. Um, so if you are between like the smaller size range and the larger size range, like let's say you're between a size 14 and 16, I would recommend getting the smaller size just because you can then expand it out and still keep your proportions um, but uh, it's a lot harder to shrink it down and make sure that that's still the same thing so that's what i would do but obviously your mileage will vary depending on where your proportions are differently um, but once you've been able to kind of narrow down what's the size range at that point you can go ahead and pick out the pattern that you want and you can go ahead and start browsing the rest of the pattern now another thing to keep in mind we have the sizes here on the top and this is what it's going to be to pick it out but you might also need to take a look at uh what is the completed sizes for this particular design so this dress in specific does not have that full table of finished garment sizes but you may see that in other patterns uh, d definitely take a reference because that will also show you uh, after you finish showing it how big is it going to be on you so if for example your bust is like 40 inches and you're looking at the completed garden size and then it's saying cool the completed bust size is going to be 45 that also gives you a, a an image of okay cool it's going to be like extra baggy around the bust and you might not like that. You might actually want to size down and pick like a smaller size so that you have less bagginess around the, the bust. So these are the sort of things that you will have to take a look at when you're looking at completed garment sizes. But again, that'll be in the back of the envelope. The next thing to pay attention to when it comes to the pattern envelope is uh, usually it's listed towards the top of the back, uh, but it's actually the description of the garment as well as and it's a little bit towards the bottom on this particular pattern but uh the actual technical drawing so the description i mean it seems straightforward so yeah it describes the dress but i mean if you're brand new to sewing it's going to unlock a lot it's going to tell you the techniques that you need to know to make the dress. it's going to tell you um kind of what is what what can you not see in the technical drawing what can you not see in the illustration um so if it's like has extra facings if it has a specific type of zipper insertion if like the sleeves are designed in a very specific way those will be outlined in the description of of the garment now it'll also break down you know if there are multiple versions um or multiple like variations on this design so for example on this one here we have an a and a b so there's actual differences to this now um i don't know if you can see my camera but on this one in particular there's a different color on on a and then there's a different color on b and um you're able to actually see that not only in the technical drawings themselves but also in the description um, and from there that'll actually make a lot of the difference in the way that you maneuver the rest of the pattern right so this is going to tell you cool if version a has a specific color it's going to require more fabric or if version b has a specific type of sleeve like a shorter sleeve like that'll be a different pattern piece that you need to look for inside so you know read that make sure that you fully understand ahead of time what is it going to take to complete one of the versions that is in your pattern design now when it comes to the technical drawings themselves as I said, they're technical drawings. This is what the designer intended when they designed this particular pattern. This is like, um, if you were to sew a straight size, whichever size you want, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like, right? Um, you can see here um, that 
the details are actually very small even for me looking at it it's like it's very close up right so uh, obviously it's in a perfect world these would be really big so you can actually see line by line what this is supposed to look like but on a zoom in close up you can see what side the zipper is going to be on you can see what the sleeve cuffs are supposed to look like so you can always reference this back as well as you know using it to decide cool i want to do version b and i know from looking at it what is it going to entail and i know where the zipper is going to be and i know how many butts it's going to need and i know it's how what sort of collar it's going to have so these are the sort of reasons that these are both here especially if you're browsing in the store like you can make those quick level decisions in the store just from these two right off the bat before i go on to the next section uh, please go ahead and hit subscribe and click the little bell if you like uh, what I've been teaching you so far. If you uh, also think that this is going to be useful for somebody who's starting out with their sewing journey, please go ahead and share the video. Um, it helps so much with the channel and helping make sure that we can continue to make videos for you. But let's move on to the next section, which is going to be the fabrics and notions sections on your pattern envelope. Now, the thing with the pat uh, with the notions and the fabric is that they seem straightforward, but it, it really unlocks all the possibilities of what this particular garment can become, right? So, you know, in the previous section, we decided, cool, we want to do version B. That, that's the one we want to do. So you want to go ahead and as you're looking at the notions and as you're looking at the fabric, start to imagine what version B is going to look like. So, for example, on this one here, um, we know that both A and B have a 12 inch simper and then uh, they have one buckle for like the belt that goes around. Um, it's also specifying that the buckle um, <clears throat> buckle or uh, buckle to cover without prong. So it's telling you a very specific type of buckle that you can use um, and that's like the recommended one that to use. Now when it comes to the fabrics, same thing. These are recommended fabrics but if you're brand new to sewing, I would highly, rec highly recommend to stick with the, uh, the fabrics that are listed here. Now this is, this is not to say you can't use other fabrics, but you have to kind of, you know, be ready for whatever challenges that that other fabrics gonna bring that the designer did not intend for this particular pattern to be using, right? So here we have listed um, this particular one, Shantung, uh, lightweight broadcloth and taffeta, and then it, you know, it's it's saying unsuitable for obvious diagonals. Now, before we get to the diagonal start, we're gonna put that aside for a second. It's giving you a, it's giving three different options for this particular dress. You can use more. <laughs> You, there's so many other fabrics that you can also use for this particular design but in order to give it the effect that we saw in the in the front of the envelope you have to use those fabrics or something similar to them now the flip side is that by using some of these other types of fabrics you may face some unintended uh, consequences so for example if you decide you know what i'm gonna make this out of a jersey fabric cool you can make anything out of anything really but it's not gonna hang right. It's not gonna sit right. The collar may not sit correctly. The dress kind of might get droopy. It may not do what the original design was saying that it could do. So just keep this in mind. Um, you know, obviously I don't wanna discourage anybody from using whatever fabric they wanna use for whatever garments, but um, you, know, you are taking some level of personal risk in, uh, in using a different fabric that's not recommended. Um, and in that, that might come with like extra work, extra materials you need to buy just to make it look the way that you imagine it to be. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at the fabrics. Now, I did wanna, I, I put the pin on a diagonal. So I wanna actually do a big, gigantic warning sign right here in the middle of this video is that as we're going through, you know, as we're seeing like not unsuitable for obvious diagonals, allow extra fabric for the plaids or the stripes and then use nap yardages, layouts for pile, et cetera. Like it's, it's a whole little section. It's a very, very, uh, it's written very subtly, like, oh, just watch out, be careful. But real talk, like beginners mess this one up all the time because they don't understand what this means. So essentially it's saying, don't use anything with diagonals because it's gonna look fucked. <laughs> um, like you can obviously, you, again, you can do whatever you wanna do, but it's not gonna have the effect that you want. It, the way that the pattern, it's, it's basically saying that the way that the pattern pieces are shaped, if you use a diagonal, 
it might look very weird and it might not look well. So just avoid it. It's unsuitable for that. We don't recommend it. So that's the first one. The second one. So it's saying nap yardage layouts for pile shaded or one way design fabrics. So just to put a little pin on it, nap fabrics are ones that have um, a specific direction. So if you think of like a piece of like faux fur where you kind of run your hand over one way and it's one beautiful color and then you rub your hand the other way and it kind of like sticks up like that's a pile like as it kind of goes back and in that motion you can see like a different version of that that faux fur come to life and the same thing happens with fabrics right so there are fabrics that are printed one direction it has an obvious top and it has an obvious bottom and so what this is saying is that yes you can use these fabrics that have an obvious top and an obvious bottom but you have to kind of be careful and to you have to make sure to use the right amount of fabric and the um, right layout in order to make sure that that design of the top and the bottom is maintained right because if you're not careful about this again i said warning um you know one side of the dress might have like the top on this side and the other side of the dress might have the top on the bottom and then obviously that doesn't look right and it's not the design that you intended so um keep that in mind as i said beginners kind of mess this one up all the time because they literally don't even understand what this means um you can also see that with nap there's one asterisk and without nap there's two asterisks and that's indicating that if there was a big substantial difference it would say cool when we reference a fabric with this asterisk versus the two asterisks take these additional considerations into account. But with that said, I know there was a lot when it came to the fabric, just, you know, gently, go gently. And um, if there's fabrics listed here that you have never worked with, this is a big plug for building your swatch book so you can actually go then and see, okay, cool, if I make it out of the Shantung, it's gonna feel like this and it's gonna have this drape versus if I make it out of the broadcloth, it's gonna have this drape and it's gonna kind of feel like this. So just, you know, Another plus one for building a swatch book, which I will shout from the rooftops. Uh, but yeah, all right, good times. We have arrived at the main event for a pattern, which is understanding how much fabric do you actually need to make this thing. Uh, so, uh, you know, if, if you've been following along with this whole video so far, if you didn't jump around, you know that we have picked a size range. We have no, we now know what is our size range. We have now know which particular design we want to be making. So by the time that you get to the, um, you know, understanding how much fabric you need, you should have a much clearer idea of direction that you're going. So this chart, um, I'm going to walk us through it, but it's a lot more straightforward now that those decisions have been made. Now in this particular design, you know, as I said at the beginning, I'm between size 16 to 20. So I'll be using that as an example to kind of walk you through this. Now we know we want to make size uh, the B. We know we want to do sizes 16 through 20, like somewhere in there. So when you're going to look at the chart, uh, the first thing you want to do is find design B. So we can see dress and belt B versus dress and belt A, right? So that's pretty obvious. We know we're going to make uh, dress and belt B. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to see the sizes which are listed across the top. Now this little chart might be organized a little bit differently if you're using a different pattern company, but the concept is exactly the same. So you'll find, okay, cool, size 16 to 20, and then you follow those down to the, the two numbers listed here. Now before we decide exactly how much fabric we're going to buy, we have to see, cool, am I, may, am I using fabric that is 45 inches wide or 60 inches wide, which is the two most common widths of fabric. Now, I'll be honest, a majority of the fabric that I buy for a lot of the pieces that you see here in the channel is actually neither of these sizes. Uh, some of them are like, they usually range between 50 and 55. That's usually where I, a lot of the fabrics that I tend to be drawn to are in that range. But if you go into a Joann's, you'll see a lot more of the 45 inches. If you're going into more of an industrial sewing place that has like, um, you know, wholesale fabric, you, you may see more of the 60 inch. So always make sure to kind of keep that in mind as you're browsing for fabric online. Um, it, what width is that fabric? Because that's also going to determine specifically how much fabric you're going to buy, right? So between 14, uh, between 16 and size 20, 
um, let's say I'm, I've picked a fabric that's 45 inches, um, you know, I can see that I'm somewhere between six yard, six and a, a quarter yards to six and a half yards. Now, how much do you buy if you're between sizes, right? If you're looking at this, you're like, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I would err on the side of buying more, uh, just because you're better safe than sorry to make sure to cover having extra. Uh, so in this particular case, if, if I were a beginner and I'm looking at between size 16 and 20, and I'm looking at 45 inch uh, wide fabric, um, I'm going to go ahead and pick the six and a half just to be safe and just to be able to make sure that I have a little bit extra. Now, mind you, the sizes listed here are with extra, but it honestly doesn't hurt to have that little bit more. Um, because I have definitely been known to cut out a pattern piece upside down and not follow the instructions correctly. And then therefore really am super happy that I have that little bit of extra fabric to cut out a piece again the second time. So err on the bigger side if you are between sizes just to make sure that you don't mess it up. Um, same thing for the next section on this one here, it's interfacing. Uh, again, pick out, you know, you can see here interface, uh, interfacing B is going to be on the larger side, one and a quarter yard. And then you can also see the lining. So for the lining, I'd be needing about four yards and five eighths. And at that point, I usually round it up. So like four and, four and three fourths yard, just to make sure to, you know, have like a solid little bit extra just to make sure nothing goes awry. But once you've kind of narrowed that down, it's a lot easier to or put in that online order, right? It's a lot easier to go up to the, the, the person at the counter who's going to be cutting out that fabric and being able to say, cool, yes, I want this fabric at this size. And then you know as you're taking it out of the store that you got exactly what you needed to make this piece. But I hope that helped, especially since this table can be super complicated. Once you know how to read a pattern envelope, so many things are unlocked for you. You can pick up a sewing pattern in whatever store. You can browse for them online and get yourself a PDF pattern. You can look at international patterns, patterns from all over the world in a language you may not immediately understand and like understand what the, the table is and understand the fabrics that are being listed there. You might have to do some Google Translate on those, but you're still able to use those patterns and those are completely unlocked for you. A lot of a lot of beginner sewing questions are answered there. A lot of intermediate and advanced, you know, questions are answered there. Um, you know, this is not something that you can just easily like, oh, you know, I don't really want to pay attention to it. Like you will go back to the pattern envelope again and again to verify that you're using the right size, that you're using the recommended fabric. If, the, if there's a specific note on like the zipper length or don't use these zippers because it's not gonna work with this, this will all be listed in the pattern envelope. So you can always go back to this as a reference. I personally keep mine out when I'm working on a project just in case I need to pull it up for whatever reason. But, you know, as I said, a lot of questions are answered here. Um, I also bring this up in my top beginner sewing problems video, which I mentioned at the top of this one. Uh, definitely go ahead and check that out and watch that video if you're brand new to sewing, because again, you know, there's so many of these sort of tips are in the sewing world that will make your sewing life a lot easier if you, if you take them into account as you're working. Anyway, if you're working on anything right now, or if you are struggling working through your pattern envelope, please let me know down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have. Um, if you're working on a brand new pattern, um, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Vintage on Tap, and I'll be uh, sharing some of my favorites here in future videos. Uh, but with all that said, please like, share, subscribe, all the places, all the stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.